Villa di Quarto, Florence, May 12, 1904. Dear Gilder, A friend of ours, the Baroness de Nolde, was here this afternoon and wanted a note of introduction to the century, for she has something to sell to you in case you'll want to make her an offer after seeing a sample of the goods. I said, with pleasure, get the goods ready, send the same to me. I will have Jean typewrite them. Then I will mail them to the sentry, and tonight I will write the note to Mr. Gilder and start it along. Also, write me a letter embodying what you have been saying to me about the goods and your proposed plan of arranging and explaining them and I will forward that to Gilder, too. As to the Baroness, she is a German, thirty years old, was married at seventeen, is very pretty, indeed I might say very pretty, has a lot of sons, five, running up from seven to twelve years old, her husband is a Russian, they live half the time in Russia and the other half in Florence and supply population alternately to the one country and then to the other. Of course, it is a family that speaks languages. This occurs at their table. I know it by experience. It is Babel come again. The other day, when no guests were present to keep order, the tribes were all talking at once, and six languages were being traded in. At last, the littlest boy lost his temper and screamed out at the top of his voice with angry sobs, My raiment il non capisco garnics. The Baroness is a little afraid of her English, therefore she will write her remarks in French. I said there's a plenty of translators in New York. Examine her samples and drop her a line. For two entire days now, we have not been anxious about Mrs. Clements, Unberufen. After twenty months of bedridden solitude and bodily misery, she all of a sudden ceases to be a pallid, shrunken shadow and looks bright and young and pretty. She remains what she always was, the most wonderful creature of fortitude, patience, endurance, and recuperative power that ever was. But, ah, dear, it won't last. This fiendish malady will play new treacheries upon her and I shall go back to my prayers again, unutterable from any pulpit. With love to you and yours, S.L.C. May 13, 10 a.m. I have just paid one of my pair of permitted two-minute visits per day to the sick room, and found what I have learned to expect retrogression, and that pathetic something in the eye which betrays the secret of a waning hope.